and let's go ahead and start with our teaching. I hope you look at the board. I, I'm looking back there. I got to start looking up there. Praise the Lord. There we go. Jeremiah 112. It's up there and it's up there. Then said the Lord to me, You have seen well, for I am alert. That is, God is alert and active. Now, that's important to understand. God is not dead. He's alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. Nail that down good. Let's, let me that last part. I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. We don't ever have to worry or trying to, to um, make the word work. God is active and he will watch over his word to perform it. Now, put your faith in that. Because when you pray, you need to learn to pray the word of God. When you confess the word, you need to learn to confess the word because he's going to do what? Perform his word. He's not going to perform I word or what we think. He's going to perform his word. That's very important to understand. Okay, and you can nail that down <coughs> that he has taken that responsibility. Turn to Philemon 1 6. Philemon 1 6. Now we've been talking about our identification with Christ, He is our substitute. Uh, what is our part in coming into the experiences of God's Word, okay? Now, remember this. God will perform His Word. He will watch over His Word, and He is active and He's alive to perform His Word. All right, let's look at it. And I pray that the participation in the sharing of your faith may produce and promote full recognition and appreciation and understanding and the precise knowledge of every good thing that is ours in identification with Christ and unto his glory. Now, there's two, many times when you study prophecy, there, it's like a two-edged sword. It could mean a certain time, and then it may mean another time in the future, a thousand years in the future. Uh, this is a what I call a two-edged sword. So when you read uh, the King James Version, put the King James Version up there, and this is what it sounds like in the King James, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Now that's the one that we quote, that's the one or the uh, scriptures that we have in the blue sheet. Now, that's a powerful verse of Scripture. So we have to learn to communicate our faith. We have to learn to share our faith. We have to learn to acknowledge <coughs> all the good things that are in us. Now, most of us have come from backgrounds, and we're, and we're not pulling anybody down because it's all been a learning process for us. But we have a more tendency to uh, look at the old self more than the new self. Now, how many understand what I'm saying there? You know, the old man and the new man. Well, we've got to settle it once and for all. The old man died with Christ. And the new man was resurrected. So all of us in here have a brand new man. And that, that brand new man is the inner man, the spirit of man. Okay? And so we have a brand new spirit. It's not a overhaul spirit. <laughs> uh, it is a brand new creation. Now, it's important that we understand that. That your inner man is a brand new creature. Never existed before. If you understand that, do something. Let me know that you understand that. Very important that we understand that. So, in that new man, there's a lot of good things that God has put into that new man. Now, just to accentuate what I said there, 
Uh, I want you to turn real quick, um, Ephesians, I've got to find it in the Bible. It's in Ephesians, uh, Charles. Uh, help me, Lord. Uh, four, I think it is. Ephesians 4, maybe 5. Let me see. I'll check it out in my Bible. Ephesians, no, it's 4. Let's start with uh, verse 22, okay? Verse 22, uh, Ephesians 4, 22. Strip yourself of your former nature. Now, let me tell you a good way to strip yourself of that former nature. Now, what, how many of you understand what he's talking about? The old man, uh, the, 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 the spirit that you were born with, uh, that is, the natural, when you were born in the natural, you had that spirit, which was dead towards God. See, that's what died when, Abraham, when Adam sinned, then our inner man died. We had no connection to God anymore. Okay, so strip yourself of your former nature, put off and declare your old unrenewed self, which characterizes your previous manner of life. Or do we understand that? See, it's important when we read the Scriptures to understand it. That's why I'm taking my time, and I want you to look at the Word of God and let it burn into your soul and understand what Paul's talking about. And become corrupt through lusts and desires that spring from delusion. Now, that's something that we are to do by acknowledging that our old self died with Christ. Now, sometimes it, 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 it kicks up, that old nature will kick up and want you to do something that we know that is not in God's will. It don't always have to be sin. It can just be a bad practice that does not lead us to be successful. <laughs> you understand that? So we don't have time to go into all of that. But let's go to the next verse now. So we, on one hand, we strip ourselves, we acknowledge that it died, it was crucified with Christ, and be con constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. That's why I walk, whether I'm home, laying in bed, wherever I'm at, I keep my attitude Christ-like. Now, I have blown it a few times. <laughs> Remember the cuckoo clock? <laughs> but, but how many of you know I'm talking, I am talking at a period of 55 years of walking with God, okay? And, 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 uh, and so I'm, I'm a lot further down the road. Uh, let me put it this way. If I haven't reached some type of level of victory, none of you stand a chance. Because I've been diligent in this thing 24-7, year in and year out, month in and month out. There never was a time that I didn't walk with the Lord. Did I walk perfect all the time? No, no, we're not talking about that. We're talking about a process of growing and maturing. And we should be a lot longer on our path of having understanding and the Christ-like spirit and the Christ-like attitude. I was sitting in the car yesterday. Yeah, I had to go, uh, yeah, Tuesday. I had to go get the stitches out of my little uh, cut, my little operation I had on my shoulder. And uh, Susan had to go into the post office. And so I'm sitting there in the car, and this guy, man, gets out of his car, and I looked at him, and I could literally see the presence of the Lord, I mean, the, the, his, spirit, his face was pleasant, smiling, uh, radiating Christ. And I said, that's a man of God. Now, what I do is I check my spirit out. This is how I learn. When I'm, when I'm moving with people, I'm looking. And I, what am I discerning in my spirit? I'm not talking about judging to condemn people, but judging uh, examining, investigating, and learning my spirit of what my spirit is sensing. Do we understand that might be too far out? Do you understand that? Okay. 
And so I said, that's a man of God. So he went into the post office, and, and about 10 minutes later, he come out, and I waved him over to the car. I said, sir, you got a minute. And he sort of come around the car like this. He didn't know, <laughs> he didn't know what to expect. I said, you're a Christian, aren't you? Now, why did I just come around and ask him? Because I, I was sure that I knew in my spirit. He says, yes, I'm a pastor. I said, well, I'm glad to meet you. I'm a pastor, too. I said, I saw your countenance. I saw Christ radiating out of your face the minute you got out of that car. And I want you to know I, I, I sensed that and I saw that. He said, well, thank you so very much. And we talked and shared about the Lord a little bit. And I gave him a, a, a one of the, the tracks. He said, well, I don't really need this. I'm saved. I said, I know you don't. But I said, why don't you order some and, and give them to the congregation and teach them to reach out and witness to other people that they might be able to acknowledge uh, the Lord and, and, and get a blessing from that and also win people to Christ. He said, well, thank you very much, you know, because you can take that little track and you can order thousands. We order thousands of them all the time. Susan is constantly o ordering them. And, uh, but see, you'll know things. You will know things about people the spirit of the sermon will operate in your life. Notice this, and be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental spiritual attitude, which we are to have all the time. Now look at verse 24 up there. Verse 24. And put on the new nature. Put on the new nature. The regenerated self, talking about your spirit man, created in God's image, Godlike, in true righteousness and holiness. Now we're going to hold that right there. Let it burn into your heart. Now remember, when Adam sinned, we, we, we say this, and I preached it, and we say that, we were created in the image of, of, of God, and that's true. Adam was in the very beginning. But when you read Genesis chapter 5, we find out that Adam had a son named Seth, S-E-T-H, -E Seth. And Seth was created in the image of who? Adam because of the fallen nature. So in this, in, in this salvation that we have, our new man now is created in the image of God again. Does everybody see that? Mary, are we coming in? All right. If I see somebody looking like, I'm not sure, I love you, I want to, because I'm going somewhere with this now. Okay. Now, let's look at that again. And put on the new nature. Well, how is this new nature? What, what does this new nature ready eat? What does this new nature, uh, what type of uh, mentality and attitude that this new nature carries with it, Godlike, in true righteousness and holiness? That's powerful. Now, let's switch over to the flesh. There is no good thing in the flesh. Have we said that enough? We know that. How many of, you, uh, of us know when the flesh is activated? <laughs> Stinks up the house, doesn't it? <laughs> Remember, I'm human too. too. I know all about it. <laughs> oh, the cuckoo clock. <clears throat> anyway, let's move from the cuckoo clock. Now, you need to identify with that. Our new identification with Christ is that now our new man, our new regenerated spirit is created now by the power of God in the image of God himself. All right? You nail that down. Don't let somebody come up and say you're just an old sinner. Wait a minute. Don't you remember what God did? <laughs> huh? Yeah, that's powerful. All right? Now, 
I want to stop right there. Getting back to that scripture, I like the King James, a knowledge in all the good things that are in us in Christ Jesus. Because if, we, if our spirit man has been created in the image of God anew, there's a lot of good things in our spirit man. And that's why we have to search the scriptures out to find out all the good things that are in us in Christ Jesus. This salvation that God has provided for the human race is awesome. It's, it's beyond anything here that we can think unless the revelation of God's would just fall on us to see the awesomeness of how we stand with God now, how he looks at us now as his children. Our spirit man has been created. Now, I am not saying tonight that we are God. We understand that? We're not gods or a god. I'm simply saying what the scripture says, that our new man has been born again by the power of God. That's what he's done for us. We cannot do anything to change our inner man into the image of God. He had to do that for us. And this is why we're so thankful and we praise him 24-7 for what the Lord has done. Now, that's got to get in your mind, your heart, your spirit. Because when it does, I'm telling you, it just will revolutionize. The whole Christian faith will become brand new to you again. You might have been walking with God for 50 years. When the revelation of it hits you, the impact, that now you again have been created in the image of God. Yes, by Adam's sin... We lost the image. Man lost that image of God. And when Adam produced Seth and Eve, when Seth came along, even though he was in the lineage that Jesus was coming down the road all the way to, to King David and Solomon and uh, uh, Mary and Joseph, he was created in the image of the first Adam. But through the new birth, by being born again, our inner man has been now again created in the image of God. Okay? I guarantee you go out there and people will not understand your language anymore. <laughs> but you'll have to slowly show them in the scriptures of what we're talking about. Now, remember God, uh, how, how would you feel See, we've got to I, I touch a little bit how God feels. <sighs> I'm sure, how many put up Christmas trees? You know, you, you put up a Christmas tree and the lights, and you're very proud of it, aren't you? Did you know God's proud of every one of us? We are gifts to God. And you, may, and you p fix this pretty tr uh, tree and somebody comes in and, you say, and just says, oh, I don't think that's pretty. Uh, you think that's pretty? Uh, how would that make you feel? So we come along and we put ourselves down. Hello? Anybody's ever put themselves down besides me a couple of hundred thousand times? Stop it. Put your hand out here and I'll slap it for you. <laughs> Stop it. We got to understand what the Lord has done. The Lord has regenerated our inner man, created in God's image, like uh, God like, in true righteousness and holiness. And that's as we let Him be the person in us, and we walk. And let him walk and carry this body. This body, all this body is, is an instrument for the new man to do God's will. Now, let's stop. Lord, make me holy. How many of you ever prayed that? Lord, I'm just... 
Well, you heard what Susan said. I just, uh, uh, wait a minute. God, seems like I've read somewhere, was Jeremiah or what? 1 uh, 12. God watches over his word to perform it. And he has, a, he has done a work through Christ and regenerated our inner man that was lost and separated from him, brought that inner man back to him, and we are saved, we are righteous, we are holy, and we are brand new creatures. Let's turn to... Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Uh, let's start here. I'm not telling nobody anything new, but I'm believing the revelation of it is coming forth in all of us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse Isn't that wonderful to have that on the board right there? I tell you, that's amazing. Woo! Glory. All right. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ the Messiah, he is a stinking creation. He is an old creation. He is a what? New Cadillac. New creation. A new creature altogether. Forget about the old. It was crucified with Christ. And see, we have a lot of those old habits in our minds. That are, uh, and I say this and for myself too. That our minds have got to be really believe the Word of God and realize what the Lord has done. And our job is to accept it, believe it by faith. Then the Holy Spirit goes to work and we'll see this new man begin to operate with power. He'll operate with, with a godly attitude. He will operate as God designed him to operate. With all this, out this effort of straining and making it. Now remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. One must believe that God is, that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So our faith needs to be in God's Word, which He looks after to perform it. Now, as this new creation that God has created in us begins to function 24-7. Oh, we need to stop there and milk that. Hmm. <clears throat> Mm. Let's, let's go. Let's, let's go. A new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. That old man has been crucified with Christ, has been buried, and when we come out of that grave, we came out a brand new creature in Christ. Behold, the fresh and new has come. What is the fresh and new? The new creation. The new species. That spiritual man that's in every one of us, and you can't see him, but he's there. And he's been created in the likeness again of God, in the very image of God again, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he is eternal, and he has great power and if we could turn loose the old and put it off and put on that new man that's been created after righteousness and true 
holiness, our whole life will change. Now, I know we've tapped into it a little bit. Is that not true? We've all tapped into it a little bit. But I tell you, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the full power of it, the full maturity of it. And I know that we got a part in that. Now, let's move on. The time is going by so fast. Where am I at? Here I am, over here. Okay, let's go to the next verse then. <coughs> But all things are from God. All right, all things are from God. Well, we know that, but let's get down to what we're talking about. This new creation that we are. Now, remember, man is a spirit. If we could just peel off this flesh and put it to one side for a little while and think about our spirit man. Just peel off your, your outer core. Just peel him on, put him on the, over there on the side. And there you are sitting right there, and I'm looking at you. Pure spirit. I pull up my old man, put him over there. You got your old, pile him up over there. Pile him up, stock him up over there. And now I'm looking at you in the spirit. What do I see? You're looking at me in the spirit. What do you see? See, y'all love me now. I'm trying to help you. All right, I volunteer first. I just took off my old man, he's off. Now you see my brand new recreated spirit created. Right, what do you see? I see uh, uh, Christ in everyone. All right. Looks a little different sometimes, but everyone has a portion of him okay. in him. That's what reflects. Okay. So uh, you, I'm sorry, did you finish? Yep. You see a brand new man. You see, you see created in the image of God. You see a holy man. You see a righteous man. Hello? Is that what you see? I mean, you know the word of God. When I look at you, I see a righteous man. Don't call that which I have cleansed unclean anymore. Peter, James and John, Bob, Susan, Spencer. Can you see why our mind has to be renewed? Because we're so hung up on the old. All right? So when I look at you, I see righteousness. I see Holiness, I see a brand new creature in God, a brand new species, one that never existed before, one that is totally, absolutely righteous and holy. Wow. Can you imagine looking at Christians like that? Hello, holy. No. We're so scared to say that. But this is what the Lord has done. I didn't do it. I'm just telling you what the Lord has done. Woo! Glory. Now Linda's got to go home to be with Francis. Now watch that holy person, that righteous person walk out that door. Look at that. Woo! Glory. Brand new creature. <laughs> All right, let's move on. But all things are from God who through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, reconciled us. Say me. Now what does the word reconcile mean? Made friendly again. God is not mad at nobody. The whole world has been reconciled back to God, but it don't do people no good if they don't believe it and accept it and receive it and received to Jesus as their personal Savior. But as far as God's concerned, once and for all, 
it's all clear as far as God's concerned. Now he's waiting on man and waiting on the church to get the gospel out to tell the good news to everybody that their old self-interest, lost spirit is dead and God's going to give them a brand new spirit. All right, let's see. Volunteer, Willie. Billy always volunteers, have you noticed that? I appreciate that. Willie, let's say you got an OA model Ford. Yes, sir. And I'm going to give you a brand new 2014 Cadillac. Mm. Are you willing to give up the OA model Ford? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, we're going to set this over here, that A model over here in the corner. All right. All right. All right. Now, the Lord's going to give him a brand new Cadillac. Now, the old other car we throw in the junkyard, and it's going to be buried there. Now, you come on. Now, I'm over here. the Lord's going to just put a brand new Cadillac inside of him. You've got a brand new Cadillac spirit. <laughs> you, oh, I'm telling you, you can sit down. Don't. Don't ever say you're an old A model. You are a brand new, created by God himself. The power of God did it at your new birth. Woo! Can you see why man has to be born again? Because the old spirit is dead towards God. It's unholy. It's been contaminated by the sin of Adam. But the new man has been cleansed and reconciled back to God. Okay, let's get on to the scriptures now reconciled us to himself, received us into favor. Say, I got favor with God. All right, let's just say you've done something wrong and you feel bad. You still got favor with God. Now, you know what to do. 1 John 1, 9, right? 1 John 1, 9. If what? If we confess it. We didn't lose our salvation. We didn't lose the holiness. We didn't lose the righteousness. We made a mistake. We want to sin. We might have talked about Pastor Bob's bald head or something, you know, like that. <clears throat> and we say, God, forgive me, I didn't mean that. He's got a beautiful, beautiful <laughs> bald head. <laughs> now, the matter is clear. It's clear. And now you put on the new man again and you go on. Has anybody ever sort of fell a little bit and put on the old man? Yeah. How many knows the action and conduct of the old man? And I don't have my way. I quit. Put it off. Put on the new man that's been created after righteousness and holiness. All right, let's move on. Look at the Word of God now. God is watching over His Word to perform it. Brought, now notice this, into, brought us into harmony with himself. Nothing between us and God now. I ain't saying nothing. I'll wait till you get back. I don't want you to miss this. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Brought us, he brought us into harmony with himself. To be in harmony with God. There is an attitude that we've got to put down. God's mad at me. God's not pleased with me. I didn't read 40 scriptures today, so he can't be pleased with me. No. God is pleased with us. He has brought us into harmony with himself. Do we know what it is to be in harmony with one another? I'm not talking about harmony grits now. <laughs> I mean, if we're in harmony, we're in harmony. Is that not true? I mean, we are sharing and... Uh, really enjoying one another, we are in harmony. And gave to us the ministry of reconciliation, 
that by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with himself or with God. Now, that's really all of our ministry, not just a pastor or the elder or deacon or minister. All of us is to share the good news, to let them know that God has already brought them in harmony with himself. God is not mad at them no more. And they could be born again by the Spirit of God and get a brand new spirit, a brand new recreated spirit, get a, a Cadillac, get a, a spirit that is holy. Now, <laughs> I'll start with this. I want you to give me two words. What did God do for you? Your, it's two words that he did. He made you what? Huh? Holy and what? And what? Righteous. Holy and righteous. All right. What did he do for you? Have you heard him? Just repeat it. All right. And accept it. Why argue with God? He's already done it. Just receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. I just saw the devil go out the door. Look at <laughs> Oh, man. See, this will bring... See, Christ came to give us life, to give it to us more abundantly. But we've got to believe. Hold your place right there. My goodness, the time is going by. Turn to Hebrews real quick. Right? Real Hebrews. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 2. Let's start with verse 3. Hebrews 2, 3. <coughs> Charles ain't up there. Oh. All right, I'll read it. For if the message given through angels, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let's go back to three. How, sh how shall we escape? Now listen to that. And when Charles comes back, we'll let him put that on the board. How shall we escape, appropriate, restribute, restitution? How shall we escape appropriate restitution if we neglect and refuse? to pay attention to such a great salvation as is now offered to us. He offers, as, as, I'll, I'll do it when I get back. We'll read it again. We'll need to read it again. He, I think he had to go to the bathroom. Now notice God offers that to us. Oh, you got it? Hey, Frank! Hey! All right, how shall we escape? We can't. Are we going to still go around that same old mountain? I'm just an old worm in the cabbage patch. That same old attitude. Because that ain't going to get us nowhere. We're just going around that one mountain, the whole church. And I don't, I don't say that mean. I'm, I am not a mean man. I say that, I cry. Listen, I don't just cry for this group. I cry for the whole church. When Paul talks about the saints of God everywhere, I'm concerned for the church worldwide. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? All right, let's finish reading that. <clears throat> and refuse to pay attention to what Brother Bob is saying tonight. <laughs> to such a great salvation as is now offered to us. And the world is rejecting it. A lot of the world is rejecting it. There are those that are coming in, don't get me wrong. Now, that's powerful. Letting, letting it drift. Letting it drift. Letting it. What is it? The salvation. The message. 
The new man has been born again. The new man has been created in the image of God. The new man uh, is holy and righteous. If you want to have some fun this week, go to somebody and, say, and tell them, you know, I'm holy and righteous. I'd like to find out the reaction. I, I do that sometimes. Get their reaction. I'm not a holy. Talk to my wife. We're not talking about your conduct. We're talking about the matter of the new man. He's been created. Our conduct is what we choose to do or not to do. That comes out, uh, that's another area of the mind and the will. But I choose to walk in the new man. I choose to walk in that holiness that God has made me. And you do too. All right, look what it says. Letting it drift past us forever. Oh, that's so sad. For it was declared at first by the Lord himself, and it was confirmed to us and proven to be real and genuine by those who personally heard him speak. Woo! Powerful. All right, let's get back to 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5, Charles. Let's start. Verse 19, I think we're on. 19. All right. There we go. It, has, it was God personally present in Christ. Notice that. God in Christ. We are in Christ. Christ is in God. Isn't that amazing? That's a secure place to be, isn't it? That's what it says in Colossians chapter 3, anyway, if you're not familiar with that scripture. So it was God in Christ reconciling, making us, or, and restoring the world to favor with himself, not counting up and holding against men their trespasses, but canceling them and committing to us, Christians, apostles, men of God, the message of reconciliation of the restoration to favor. So it's been done. For the world. Our job is to tell them what the Lord has done. Okay? Well, but they might want not listen. Go to somebody else. There's millions of people out there. You know what a good salesman is? A good salesman knows that he's got to at least deal with 10 people to get one sale. He's got to ring 10 doorbells to find one person that will buy his product. So be a good salesman. First person may reject, but you're planting seed. Somebody else will come along and water it, but what? God gives the increase. Always remember that. All right, let's move on, and then we're going to knock off. Let's go to the next verse. So we are Christ's ambassador. Everybody say, I'm Christ's ambassador. God making his appeal, notice this, God making his appeal, as it were, through us. So when you witness to somebody, that's God making his appeal through you to that person. This guy, I picked up this conversation. Uh, Susan did a little shopping over at Mount Pleasant and Tammy. And so uh, I find me a seat and I sit down. And so somebody comes along and they make a mistake and sit down by me. I said, you don't know I'm an ambassador, do you? <laughs> For God. <laughs> Whoops, he's gone. And I'm just kidding. Uh, I got a couple jokes that I tell people, which are clean jokes. And see, they, they, they just drop their guard. You know, this, is a, this guy's all right. He's one of us, he thinks. See, anyway. So he had to do some. I said, when you come back, I want to tell you this joke. So he comes back, sits down, I tell him the joke. And uh, I got my track ready, my little track ready. I said, can I ask you a question? 
He said, sure. Now, we're friends now. I mean, I told him a couple of jokes. We're buddies, you know. Let's go down to the beer joint and have a few. He's ready to roll, right? So I, I said, let me hold your hand for a minute. Oh, okay. So I held a hand. I said, I'm really glad to meet you. I said, I got a question. Do you know the Lord as your personal Savior? He turned pale. I held his hand. I said, you know the Lord loves you. He has provided salvation for you. And you can have all your sins forgiven. Uh, I, I got to go. Well, just one more little bit. I'm holding. He ain't going. I got his hand. You know what? I, I, this guy, you ever felt? Look, look, look at this. <laughs> you think I could get away from him? If you, if you felt his hand, huh, look at that. Man, it's powerful. And I was holding on to it like that. And he was white as a sheep. And I said, listen, God loves you. I said, would you do me a favor if I let you go? Yeah, what is it? Would you read this little pamphlet? Yeah, yeah. I said, God bless you. I'm glad I met you. <laughs> but see, I planted a seed. But how many of you know I'm braver now to get, look for somebody else? Now, don't get me wrong. I follow the Holy Spirit, okay? And, uh, but I tell you, you'd be surprised that the many opportunities you will have if you are alert and realize you are an ambassador for Christ and God through you is appealing to that person to come to him and receive the salvation that God has provided for them. Powerful thought. All right. <clears throat> Next verse. For our sake, he made Christ, all right? For our sake, he who is there, God, made Christ virtually to be sin, who knew no sin. So Christ became sin with our sins. He became sin with our sins, all of our sins. Every one of them that would, in the past, the present, and the future, was laid upon Jesus Christ, and he became sin. Uh, sin with your past, present, and future sins that you may commit, or I may commit. <clears throat> Who knew no sin. He knew no sin. He was the perfect sacrifice. He knew no sin. And yet God took all of our sins and put upon him. So that in and through him, that is Christ, we might become endowed with and viewed as being in and examples of the righteousness of God. That's powerful. Well, we are to be approved and acceptable and in right relationship with Him by His grace or His goodness. That's what mercy and grace, you can say His goodness. He did it by His goodness. And what do we do? Receive it. Receive it. As many as receive Christ, God gives them the power, the authority to become sons of God. He looked us up. Now, here's what you're going to find. Christ started all of this. He captured us, and now we're all born again. And to get back to what I was sharing at the very beginning, practice it in the presence of God. Now, here's what you'll find in people's lives. When they first come to Christ, they're all uh, energized and excited about being a Christian. How many remember that? Now, some people last for about an hour on that, uh, hour on that experience. <laughs> some last an, uh, a, a year on it, and maybe two years, and you see them uh, being weaned away. They begin to drift away. How many understand what I'm saying? I, I don't feel his presence no more. Listen. Listen what the scripture says. Draw nigh. Now you draw nigh to God. And he'll draw nigh to you. If they don't understand that, you'll feel like, well, where did God go? He knows what he's doing. He wants you now to seek him. Now, at the beginning, we couldn't. We were lost. We were blind. We were undone. We were in sin. We were in bad shape. 
He had to look us up. The good shepherd went out and got that lost sheep and brought that lost sheep in. He brought, we were all lost. He went out. He looked for us. He hounded us down. He saved us. He brought him to himself. He says, now get grounded and rooted in a good, uh, full gospel church and, 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 and then begin to seek me now. Begin to serve me. Notice, it's been off of him, now on us right now. And if you want to practice the presence of God, reach out to him. Draw nigh to him. And you can draw nigh to him. Susan washing dishes. She's singing. Washing dishes. I come in. I'm hungry, Ma. She'll stop doing the dishes, draw her hand, and she'll fix me my lunch. But she's still singing. She doesn't break her relationship with God. Talk with people, but she is constantly aware of who she is in the Lord and what the Lord has done as she practices the presence of God. And so many of you do too. But 24-7 is available. So God was so gracious to save us all and we're moving along. How many people in here knew that, know somebody that when they got saved and they, they, they came to church for a while and they just drifted away? How many has ever seen that? See, they don't understand that God withdraws his presence. Let me put it this way. He withdraws his conscious presence from you. Get it? Conscious presence that you might seek him and get in his word and start studying it, it's like, it's like, it, it's very simple. You'll see it in nature. How many has ever seen two little birds in a nest? The father, the, the father lays the eggs, right? Or, <laughs> I, no, the, the mother <laughs> lays the, <laughs> yeah, you get mixed up sometimes. <clears throat> but the mother lays the eggs, they sit on, they do all the work. The eggs hatch out, the little, you know, and, it, and, and when, they, when they hatch out, they're just a blob. Up there, you ever seen a pigeon, a little pigeon, a little, just a blob and a big mouth like that? And the mother's constantly, and the father's constantly feeding, 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 feeding. And the kid, the little bird, it's up to a point. But how many know there's a moment in which the little bird has got to learn to fly and feed himself? But he wants to stay in the nest with his mouth open. And just keep dropping it in. But the mother knows, got to quit feeding, withdraw her presence. I'm getting hungry up here all by myself. What's these things for? Oh, I can fly. Oh, that looks like a rabbit down there. You learn to feed yourself and grow and mature become responsible and God then comes back and you become partners with God and it's beautiful. That's the picture. That's the picture. And that's where all of you are right now. God says, draw nigh to him. In your Bible study, in your everyday work, acknowledge him. And the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 8, I think it is, Acknowledge God in all thy ways, and he will direct thy path. And if you understand the ways of God, you'll learn to feed yourself, and whatever you get here at church is a little extra bonus. It's like uh, Mrs. Campbell's cake. Justine. Uh, is, is there going to be one on the table Sunday? Y'all get out of my way. I'm coming through. <laughs> so, so let me encourage you all now and to encourage, encourage other Christians to begin to seek the Lord because he, he you know, and it, it, we reverse the whole thing because he wants us to learn to fly and to be ambassadors and, uh, and to be ambassadors for him. And get out there. You know, I know you're doing that. I'm just encouraging. Sometimes I just say something you already know. Okay. 
I think that's it. Thank you so much. Praise God. Well, do you have any questions?